This week on QDL, we're going to take a look at a new digital microscope from Olympus. Uh, this thing does a lot of really amazing things, so you don't want to miss it. Come back and join us in 30 seconds. Welcome back to QDL. QDL is your weekly look at who and what is making news in the world of quality. I'm Dirk Ducharme, Editor-in-Chief of Quality Digest. And with me in the studio again for today's Tech Corner is Rob Bellinger from nice Olympus. Olympus. See you again, Dirk. Uh, I mean, Olympus. <laughs> Rob, thanks for joining us. Uh, and we've got the DSX-1000, is that right? That's correct. This is our new digital microscope, uh, remodeled from the ground up from the previous uh, model. This is the DSX-1000. Uh, some of the Big changes. They uh, they spent a lot of time and effort as being a leading edge optics company, creating a new optics range for this entire microscope. So ground up optic change for it. We have a lot of optics choices that you can kind of see on our table in front of us today, and I'll go through the differences between those. Um, new frame from the ground up. We have the same motorized XY capability, but we have a centerable motorized rotation stage now. Yeah, and that's going to be yeah. interesting. We're going to get to that in a little bit. That's really yes, fascinating sir. what you guys did with that. Yeah, <laughs> and we also took in our high resolution frame now. We're also capable of tilting all the way to 90 degrees from either angle. And uh, kind of a new uh, interface capabilities for the system as well with our hand switch. This brings a lot of the functionality that we used to work with in the software by using the mouse and clicking and adjusting things out to a hand switch for more convenience and ease of use and quicker movement and such. So, so yeah, let's, let's let, take, take us through it. This is interesting. So this is actually off, quite so. a departure, uh, from, at least from the other instruments you've brought into the studio before. This is really something different. This is something different from, like I said, they really changed the entire system ground up and, you know, built in a lot of features into one unit. In the past, we used to have two systems to kind of do the same thing that this one system can cover okay. from low mag range to high mag range. So starting off, we have a super long working distance objective and it's a 1x, so we can go very low magnification range. That's kind of what I wanted to show here with our little uh, ball grid array part. We're looking at on our screen here at 20 times magnification. And we have a lot of working distance under the objective lens. So if your part has a lot of topography or big components on it, we can still image down into things. And what's great about this low mag objective in the software here, we can go do a quick live panorama, they call it. And all I do is hit the button for a 2D simple panorama. And what it's doing is moving the stage in X and Y and stitching together the entire overview of our part. Okay. And we, if we had a larger part, we could say to do a, a larger area, but this is going to capture around the edge and create an overview image for us. Now, you, you've programmed it to for the area that it's going to do this, this scan of, or is it detecting the, the edge of the part? All I had to do was tell it that I wanted to do a three by three that I knew would cover the area. Okay, three gotcha. fields of view by three fields of view. Okay. So when it's done, we'll not only get a stitched image that we could save out, but we can go back to our live observation and it uses that image in the map image over here now. So this makes it convenient to quickly move around your part to certain areas of interest. And it keeps an update of your location on the part. Okay. So being a digital microscope, it's built in with optical zoom capabilities in the software as well. So as I slide this slider up or with the mouse, I can do all these same features on the hand switch. So on the hand switch here, I just turn an optical zoom button and I can zoom in and I can change focus. It's all very convenient on the hand switch. I can move around with the XY of the stage control and I have a whole host of buttons for all the different observation methods that I'll cover in a minute. Lighting control, you turn intensities up and down. It makes it really easy just to quickly adjust. Throw a sample on, move around, quickly adjust. And this is something we that at least on I believe any other microscope you've brought into the studio mm -hmm. before is this whole you know, everything at your fingertips on a tether <laughs> at That's the end. Correct. You don't need to have direct access to the to the microscope, and you're not having to click and slide and drag things using a mouse either. It, I mean, it seems it, just a much easier interface. It's an easier interface. Customers kind of uh, wanted to move away from the mouse clicks and the movements. It's great for ergonomics. We talked about a little bit earlier. Um, 
the ability to stand at the tool and change your ad adjustments on a hand switch, the ability to break up the monotony of using the mouse continuously, and uh, the quickness as well. Just single button pushes to create an observation method, to, right. to capture an image, to move the stage around, change observation methods, you know, bright field to dark field, things like that, yeah. all at your fingertips. So you'll see me interfacing with this quite a bit and not a lot of use of clicking and moving around the software so much, and I definitely don't have to reach up and pull sliders or push in prisms <laughs> or anything on the microscope. Right. Everything's motorized and controlled by the hand switch and the software interface. So basically, when, once you set up your sample and maybe your basic setup, you, you're pretty, you can be pretty much hands-off on the microscope itself. Pretty hands-off, okay. besides maybe changing out to different observations of objective magnifications okay. and different working distances, which I'll show you is a really simple switch out. Okay. So let, let's cover that real quick. If I um, say I want to take a look at these four pins in the field of view here at a little closer magnification than the one X is giving me because right now I've got a large field of view which is great but I want to get a little closer observation I can just reach over to the microscope now I'll look before I do that I'll put the software into what we call Z rising where it moves the head okay, up out of the way okay. yeah so you don't you know you're further away from your sample you don't have to worry about hitting and there's a button on the front here and it just slides out oh, okay and this objective lens can be stored in a storage container box that we sell with this that keeps them sealed and maybe we want to switch to 10 times magnification, our 10x objective here. It's huge. Yeah, this <laughs> is, <laughs> the reason for the size is it not only allows lighting down the center, but it allows lighting around the outer edge here as uh, well. Okay, okay. So the distance here is still super long working. So as I put this in, we're still quite a distance away from our part. So we can still have a part with a lot of texture, but increased magnification range. Okay. To bring it back into focus, what's great about all these optics, and Olympus is an optics company, so they made them specifically for this microscope. All the optics, even our long working and our super long working, are all par focal. So that means I can just say, move back to the tilt position or the focus position, and it brings us right back into focus. And right back into focus, on the same spot? On the same spot. So I had those four pins centered in the field of view. You still see them in the field of view here. Okay. So when I pushed it in, there's a click mechanism that holds the lens into the lock position, centered position. So a, a combination, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, so a combination so. of very accurate mechanical indexing of the lens back into place correct. along with the software allows you to change one objective out, I mean mm -hmm. completely remove one objective, yep. Yep. put another objective in place, and you can go right back to exactly the same spot on your sample that you were looking at. Yes, you'll be within the same spot mm -hmm. and you'll be within the same focus that you should just be able to hit the autofocus button on your hand switch okay. and it'll autofocus onto our background of our wow. image here. Okay, very cool. The other thing that to note in the software, it automatically detected that we switched to the 10X objective up here as well. So all of the calibrations, and shading corrections and all that are automatically applied for the lens that you've popped into the uh, slide turret here. Okay. So now that we're at the 10X and we have these four pins, maybe we double click, double click allows you to center, you can use the joystick on the hand switch. Maybe we wanna see these pins in focus at the top and the bottom at the same time. Okay. Which is a great possibility to get everything in focus since we're controlling motorized Z all we have to do is hit the 3D acquisition button on the hand switch okay. or the 3D acquisition in the software and it's going to scan through and quickly grab all of our focus information. So it, it steps through Z taking, uh, uh, taking a shot each yeah, time, right? Each time. And, and then stacks them all up. Yeah, and it's almost okay. instant. I mean, okay. if you that blinked, quick, yeah. we would have missed it. So it quickly goes from top to bottom as fast as the Z can move pretty much and captures those images for us. Okay. So now that we've not only captured all the focused images and created one image that's all in focus, we captured all the 3D height data. So a user's gonna do an image, they're gonna step to a measurement function, and in the measurement, they might wanna see the profile of these. Now that we have all the height data, we can not only see the image in focus, but we can see the profiled height data, or height information, and we can also switch to a 3D view. So as I rotate this around and zoom in and out with my mouse, we can see the 3D information on the surface. You can see the cross-sectional profile that I'm plotting along these pins. And we can take the Z-height measurements. We can take step measurements. We can do our geometric measurements where we want to measure maybe from the center of a pin to the center of a pin. 
we can do volume measurements. Maybe we want to know the actual volume that pen takes up off the surface. And I should say that that, that menu, uh, as we've seen in the past, uh, mm -hmm. Olympus has really made the menus very just intuitive. It's not a, you look at it and you mm -hmm. kind of intuitively understand what, e what, each, what each button does. You've got sections uh, yeah. sectioned off in, in, your, in your menu section. Uh, I just think it's a very intuitive interface. It, they make it large buttons. They make them very simple. When you yeah. change it to this button, it changes the interface that you're working with for just that interface. It yeah. removes all the other buttons. Well, I mean, and even just and like, it, I mean, as a novice, you know, mm -hmm. somebody who hasn't really seen this much, I mean, volume, you got a section for volume yeah. measurement. I know what that means, right? So, <laughs> exactly, and to change the volume, it, it has an interface here to where you just bring the volume up to the point that you want to measure uh, the volume okay. at. So it's really interactive. Everything clicks and drags and moves. It's intuitive for the operator right. to just grab this and move up to the upper level of the volume to know the volume information that they're getting on the pins here. Yeah, wow. They can also, you know, do some added features in the software like caliper measurements where it does edge detection and measures distances between lines or circles. We can do particulate analysis. And another great feature is surface roughness measurements and line roughness measurements. Since we have all that Z-height information, we could go right to here in surface roughness and actually specify a region of area maybe right on the surface of our pin. We mark a little area on the surface of the pen, and we want to know the surface roughness. So we can calculate that information, and it reads out about 1.08 microns of surface roughness on the surface of the, oh, just that okay. pen. I could have marked multiple roughnesses and spit out all the information uh, individually of each pen's roughness. Okay. So it's a great tool for all that Z-height information, step measurements, but it can also do all the 2D point-to-point -point measurements. And the next step, once the operators say they take a profile measurement and they capture the Z data, they export it. They can right click over here and transfer this data to Excel real easily. But beyond that, they can even simplify it more in the workflow across the top. They can just create their report. Hmm. When they hit the report button, it's going to drop into a template. This template's completely customizable. This one I have, you know, a title at the top, the 2D image showing where I plotted my measurement. It shows you the cross section. It shows the measurement data here. It shows all the acquisition parameters. And on the second page, I had it plot the height information in 3D where I can rotate this around, zoom in and out, pan it, tilt it however I want. Once you have it, set up the way you want and fill in the information, type in the comments that you want. You can export the reports out to the PDF format or an RTF format where you can go to Microsoft Word as well. Okay. The PDF locks it down and makes it so where people can not adjust the data sure, afterwards. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of the workflow. Put the part on, use the hand switch, autofocus, swap out the lens quickly, take a measurement and create a report. It's meant to be quick and easy for users. But going back, we have a lot more advanced inf capabilities in the tool as well. We have the ability to go to even higher resolution objectives. So right now we're on the live image, we're at 10x, and we're on the super long working distance. But if I go over here and I want to switch, I can go to my Z uh, lift up position again, take out the super long working distance objective, and then I can switch to our regular long working distance. So these are a little bit closer working distance, but increase the resolution even higher. And this one I have a 10X and a 40X. And the 10X objective will be the same field of view as what I just switched out in the super long working, but have a higher resolution. Okay. And the 40X will take us even higher mag. Okay. So we went from 1X at 20 times magnification on our screen to where when we put in the highest mag objective, we can go all the way up to 7,000 times wow, okay. optical zoom. And that's important to note, it's optical zoom. Not digital zoom. Not digital zoom where you're just blowing up an image and it pixelates. Right, right, exactly. So again, all the lenses are par focal, so all I have to do is go to a like, tilt position. My 10x objective will drive down to the same focus point to where it's close enough that I should just be able to hit the autofocus button and it'll find focus on the pins for us again. Wow. So same field of view, my same four pins in the field of view, but I'm seeing a little bit more contrast now, a little more resolution out of this objective. And we can then you know, keep doing the 3D image or 
We can also do a kind of a tilt view image. So if it's important to see a sidewall of these pins, okay. we can set up now to release the mechanism here. And this system is really easy. It has a release clutch and it's all counterbalanced. So we can tilt and create an angled view here. So you just tilt, you just tilted the whole head. How, how far over can the, the whole can head. head come? So the head uh, can tilt as far as 90 degrees. Okay. It's going to be a little sample dependent. Your sample can't have too much topography to get over on that sure. side edge. You might have to even be at the edge of your sample, but it can tilt all the way over 90 degrees either side. Okay. Um, what's great is it's encoded as well. So right now we're tilting at about 20 degrees. Whoops, if I can move my mouse here. And the software here in the bottom right, it shows the angle of tilt degree. Okay. So we can look at this pin and see the sidewall a little bit greater. And what's nice, you've got multiple pins in the field of view here. I could zoom to the bottom pins here and see those, or I can hit my acquire button again for 3D and capture all those in one shot at an angled view. Huh. So I have an all in focus image and seeing the side angle of from all the tilt. pins from a tilt. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that's it's pretty quick, cool. it's that's easy, cool. yeah. and it yeah. gets you all the information so then you can take this picture out and do yeah, more Yeah, because analytical. sometimes you can't see what you need to see just from the top. From the top, yeah. yeah. You, gotta, you gotta come in at the side sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes, especially if you wanna see you know, what happened to a sidewall structure, if there's a fracture or something on the side, or right. maybe where connection points happen right. to something that's on top of this pin. So let me go back to are upright and there's a detent and it just locks into the upright position so you know that there you're you directly at 90 degrees and then in the software again it tells you that your tilt is locked so okay. you know you're looking straight and I'll hit the autofocus again so if I'm looking at this and you know I'm just in bright field right now where the lights coming straight down and I see the texture in the background but this system has a lot of different observation modes in the software here. He's shown it on the screen. We have not only bright field, but something called oblique imaging. Oblique imaging allows you to tilt the angle of the light to the surface of the sample. So we can tilt it from left to right side. We have dark field imaging. This is where it brings the light from an angle 360 degrees around to give us contrast. We have something called mix illumination that I'll show you in a minute where we can mix these observation methods. We have polarized light microscopy built into the system, and this is true polarized light where we have an analyzer and polarizer built in. It's not digitally rendered polarized light. And same thing with the DIC. DIC is differential interference contrasting, okay. and it's uh, done on normal microscopy uh, compound microscopes where they insert, they usually have to manually insert a DIC prism or an Omarski okay. prism. Differential interference contrasting gives you texture capabilities on the surface. It works great on polished surfaces to bring out small defects. And this is true optical DIC in the microscope and the DSX-1000. Okay. It has an actual prism in there that's motorized and can adjust. It's not a digital DIC. So what if you don't know what all these are going to give you and you don't know exactly what's going to work best for your you sample? You don't even know what DIC means. Yeah, you might not know what <laughs> like DIC me. means. <laughs> you can come up now and just hit best image and you can tell it, I want to see all the modes. And what it's going to do is automatically switch all the modes on the microscope. Again, I don't have to push levers. I don't have to change prisms out. So it, it's going to go through and just manually, I mean, it's going to go through and automatically select all these different uh, types, and then you just choose yep. the one that you, you That's like correct, best, right? yeah. So it's changing all the observation methods currently in the software, and then it gives you a thumbnail image of all the different observation methods. So if I select here, this is our bright field image that we were looking at. Dark field, and you can see the, the selected image on the right here. Dark field brings out a lot of um, small contrasty particulates in the background that you didn't see before, contrast around the edges that you didn't see in bright field. But bright field, if I go back, you don't see those little specks, but you see the contrast in the background that you lose in dark okay. field. So we have something proprietary here on our system called mix illumination that does a mixture of bright field and dark field at the same time. And we can see the background texture and the contrast of the small particulates at the same time. True polarized light microscopy. So what you're seeing here is the green in the background. That's out of phase. It's okay. phase contrasting. So that really highlights anything out of phase. If you're looking at just interested in this material in the background, so you might want to use it. it puts in a, a polarizing filter um, it, it is up in the in the head itself. yeah okay. it, it yeah. pushes it a polarizing light uh, a polarizing filter into the light path and an okay. analyzer as well that can be sheared okay and 
We also have that DIC. So if you look at DIC, you're seeing more texture on the surface here. And yeah, he's got the screen up now. So the texture on the surface really pops with DIC. And then we also can see that oblique lighting. So if I switch from oblique left to oblique right, now on the right one, you really see the shadowed effect of these little bumps on the surface. Now on, on the oblique lighting, um, something I meant to ask you is, it looks like, is the light actually built into the this objective here? The light is uh, just above the objective in the head. Okay. So the light, if um, we can switch to the objective image here. Um, back to the, uh, yeah, the, the camera the that shows the, this. Yeah. There we yeah. go. So you can see that it allows the light to go around the outer path. Oh, I see what it's doing. Okay, okay. And okay, it also sure. lets it go through the center path. Okay. So all the objectives can do all of the imaging modes. That's another okay. great thing. We have the super long working distance objectives. Guess what? They can do dark field and, and rotational dark field lighting. Same with the high res objectives and um, the long working distance. They all have the same capability for observation methods. Okay. So if you want to switch to DIC, you don't have to worry about pulling off and putting on a special lens just for DIC. Right. Or if dark field, you don't have to pull off just the bright field lens. They all have the capabilities built in. Switching lenses is just changing working distance or magnification. Okay. So say we want to look at the mix. We want to get the bright field and dark field and see the contrast between the two. All we have to do is hit apply and it sets up the microscope for us automatically. And goes out and takes it. And we have all those. And again, we want to see this all in focus. We can just hit acquire 3D either on the screen or on the touch uh, hand switch. And it goes through and captures all of our in focus information. Wow, that is <laughs> that's pretty cool. And that's you can cool. render those 3D images and rotate around them. So. Uh, well, there's one thing I wanted you to show oops, us. Um, I'll go back to imaging. Oh, no, oh, go ahead if you were going to do a measurement there. Well, no, I, wa I wasn't going to do another measurement. We talked about those. I wanted to show a little bit higher magnification range, maybe. Oh, okay, sure. Um, so right now, you know, we're at 140x, and let's see, I want to move down to this great thing about our map screen is I can move quickly down to an area of interest. So you just selected screen, it so. on the map. So yeah, I'm okay. at very high mag right now, yeah. and I selected on the map to move down to this location. If I wanted to move over here, I just click. And, and it just goes, okay. Yeah, but yeah. if I want to get to this location where I have this little removed BGA bump that I wanted to focus on and see. So this is a, a completely um, ripped off the surface right, ball right. grid, yeah. yeah. So we're seeing the surface background and the silver, you know, the solder point that was left over before. I can mag in on this with the optical zoom at the using our 10x objective and get a pretty good field of view and see the details of the surface pretty clearly. But if I want to get even a little more resolution, a little more magnification, I can then slide on this same tray. I have the 40x objective I can bring in. Wow. So the 40x not only increases our magnification, but we get a little bit more contrast and resolution on the surface. So again, we can go down to our bottom of focus and hit the 3D acquisition, and it'll build all the 3D data. And we captured the surface out here. We That's can crazy. render that in 3D and see wow. the cupping effect and the removal of that ball. So then we might want to do volume measurement on something like sure. this. Um, the other thing is if you had an interest of you know, maybe a small speck on here, you can go back to live, center up on that, focus on it, and optically zoom and really gain that magnification range that I was talking about earlier. So here we're at almost 3,000 times magnification. Here I'll yeah. get to, there's 3,200. That's nuts. And you're not getting that pixelation yeah, in the this, image. Yeah, this is optical, yeah. Yep. So this is a long working distance objective with very high resolution capabilities, which is something specific to the DSX-1000. We don't have any other microscopes using this objective with this amount of working distance yeah. that you're getting away from the sample with that higher resolution. It's really unique. And why they specifically made optics for this microscope for this purpose. So you're still able to do some tilting with this lens. You're still able to you know, have a lot of topography on your surface, but still get very high magnification ranges. Since you happen to be in a corner of your sample, mm -hmm. I, there's something I want you to show because this is this is crazy. I don't think I've ever seen this. That's right. 
So right. I mean, y so your yeah. sample is, you are not centered in your sample, and yet you have the capability to rotate the stage. That's right. And still keep on that same point in the sample, which is it's just nuts Yeah, I almost, for, <laughs> almost forgot about this, and it's a really unique feature to the scope. We have a motorized XY rotatable stage, and the rotatable stage is centered. So we can then be on a part of interest and rotate around it. Now we're nowhere centered on our no. stage. <laughs> no. We're centered on the part and it rotates right around the center axis of whatever we want here. So, so no matter where you, so if you were to move the XY stage now to a different location. Whole different location. So if I was to drive it, let's move up to, and I'll bring my focus up, to something like this where okay. we, we want to see you know, different angles of this. And now you can rotate it. Now I can just rotate around that angle. And it stays, <laughs> that's just nuts to me. And I mean, if you just think about it, what's going on here is just crazy. Yeah, and say maybe we want to see down the side of this, you can then also tilt at this rotated angle and see down on the side wall of that little part. Yeah. And I can <laughs> center up on it, I can refocus, I can even, again, hit the 3D acquisition and acquire all of this in focus at the tilt angle, rotate it at a certain degree. Great thing is, is it even calculates the degree of rotation that you're at. We're at 72 degrees rotation. So this may, this may be asking a bit much, but back mm -hmm. in the live view, with it tilted, can you still rotate it and be centered? So since it's tilted, it's going to shift the pattern a little bit, but it will stay pretty close to in your field of view. Right. So, so it, I, I guess what I was thinking is if you wanted to look around it, a part live, yeah. you can still basically You can still nuts. do that. Yeah, you just double click to move the stage and yeah. rotate so you could, around it. You could, yeah, you could just rotate it around and look yeah. at all sides of, of, all uh, sides of, all the, sides of that, that, that uh, particular so, point. And it's that's not, an important fact that it's a centered rotatable stage. Yeah. And you know, that allows you to be anywhere in your XY drive of the stage and rotate around the center of the optical axis rather than around just the center of the stage. So a lot right. of times, other systems, you'd have to be right in the middle of the stage travel, put your part right there, and then it might rotate right around that. But right, and, then, that, and if you wanted to look at a different area, you'd have to center the, that particular feature right the over the center, center of the stage. Of the stage. Yeah. yeah, this yeah. one, we centered the stage to the optical path. So yeah. no matter where the stage moves, it's, it's centered in the optical path, so it rotates right around optics. It's a great feature. So, a lot of different capabilities that we quite, kind of didn't cover. Um, you know, the mixed lighting, it does allow for, you know, rotational lighting at different angles. So, when you're on a tilt like this, you can bring the lighting at different angles and rotate it around. I can even use the touch mechanism to rotate my light with this knob. It's a really unique feature. So, if I look and at just dark field, too. And who's, uh, who is this? microscope intent with all these features that you've shown who's yeah. this really intended for do you think it has got a broad range um, we're seeing it in a lot Electronics, of different labs. obviously yeah. <laughs> yeah so we're seeing even the semiconductors where yeah. they're dicing and the small components are bringing out and imaging on this because they have all these unique imaging features and it's so simple to use they walk up and run with it um, to metallurgical applications we can take an image like this. When you talk metallurgical, I'll, I'll go back to a 2D image, and um, you know maybe we capture a 3D image again here. And we can take this image and do a lot of metallurgical measurements in the software, like your step measurements, your volume sure. measurements. That's all great. But a lot of customers out there are looking at metals and cross sections and things like that. They want to look at specific material solutions. So we can go out, drop it into Olympus Stream, and it is integrated with this software, and it drops it out to our metallurgical software application that okay. has a lot of capabilities. So the image opens up in here, calibrated, ready to go. You don't have to worry about saving it, and opening the stream, folder. This is Stream now. And this is Olympus Stream so now. So we've switched from DSX 1000 software, software to, to the Olympus Stream, stream software. software. Okay. But since it's all Olympus, it's kind of integrated. It's all, Single yeah. button click. And the operator now has all of our material solutions to utilize. Our material solutions could be like grains size measurement, layer thickness, meta metallic inclusions in steel. So this kind of system is being sold across that range of metallurgical applications in steel manufacturing to grain size in copper or grain size in um, um, well, all kinds of different materials, right, right. metals and, and 
And yeah. I think you also a lot of people are using uh, uh, your microscope sense in stream for uh, um, particle counting, right? For cleanliness uh, application. And that's correct. You yeah. can use the particle distribution solution module, and maybe they're doing quick cleanliness testing on parts through filters or even touching on, you know, sometimes they use low contact tape. They can put something like that on here and set up the particle distribution solution module, scan it with the DSX with the stitching feature, come in here and count all those particles and it'll size those particles, bend them into different class ranges like particles that are 5 microns to 10 microns and 20 microns to 50 microns. And then it can even put pass fail results in the particle distribution solution module. You can say, if I have this many particles, it fails. Yeah. And if I don't, then it passes, and it'll tell the operator that right away. So you could have a huge, broad range of use with the system. Yeah. And the solution modules are kind of custom. They, they don't have to have them all. They would p purchase the ones they're going to use. Well. So. Well, this is this has been great. I mean, this is really a fascinating, uh, really a fascinating machine. A lot of cool, a lot of cool features. Uh, a lot of cool features on it. Yeah. I, I'm still just kind of maybe I'm, I don't maybe other people have seen this yeah. before. I've just never seen that whole centering function where you can position anywhere on a part, and that still just yeah. kind of blows me away a little bit. So in the past, you only ever saw it on pole microscopy. You okay. know, center rotatable stages were on pole microscopes that we okay. sell as well, and they're unique but having it on a motorized XY stage is something I've never seen either. And right. it's a really unique feature because it has to have an integrated motor stage. We don't have cables hanging off that sure. clunk around and move out of the way. And yeah. So it's all integrated and it allows you to rotate around. The tilting feature allows you to get all those different angled views and still rotate and see different angles. So all the different light sources yeah. and and the remote uh, and the remote control. Yeah. Uh, all really cool features. It uh, is. Well, so this was the DSX-1000? DSX-1000 and we just recently launched it, so like you said, I've been playing with it the past couple of days. It's okay. got me in awe too. So. Well, we'll have a link out to it uh, underneath Great. the player page down there. You can click on that and go out to Olympus and the. Thank you. I'm Dave. assuming yeah. there's going to be a web page uh, available for this. We absolutely have a web page okay. going now. We have a lot of great marketing videos on the web page that show video functions of everything I showed. Um, they can go there and take a look at all that content as well. All right. Get a full brochure too. Perfect. Well, Rob Ballinger, yeah, thank uh, you again Olympus, thanks for a lot. Time. Thanks for coming out here. <laughs> and thanks to all of you for joining us today as well. Hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I think this is a very interesting piece of equipment. Uh, as usual, if you have any other equipment that you would like to see on the show or any topics you would like us to, to cover, just let us know by sending an email to qdl at qualitydigest.com and we'll try to uh, get those things or those people onto the show. So that is it for today. Thanks for joining us and we will see you at the next QDL. So long.